Hello, everyone, and welcome to an exciting episode of CLX Foundry Live right here on CLX Gaming TV, where we go inside custom builds and assemble them from the ground up. I'm your host, DJ Blue PDX, and of course, joining me right now in the studio, it is none other than our lead technical expert, Paul Steffens, and today's master builder, Hayden Hutchinson. Gentlemen, how's it going? It's going. Hello. It's going good. good. Okay. And Elm, so uh, by the way, Hayden, you are muted in the Discord call. <laughs> but I saw your mouth move, so I was like, ha ha! I know he messed with me. So here's the fun thing about today while well, he's getting that unmuted. Uh, we are going to be announcing the winner of March's giveaway, which is that incredible purple based PC back there with that beautiful ARC A770. And it is wicked. But, but we have something else to show you today, which is going to be, well, Violet in nature. Get it? Because <laughs> we're rebuilding our April PC giveaway that is going to be, uh, well, it's a special. It's a new color. We haven't even carried this before. Get it? Violet in nature. Yep. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So uh, we've got we've got some fun to happen here. And so everybody, just so you know, we've got the new update for the link with your to get into the giveaway. Plus, we've got more codes. So uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. Boys, what are we putting in this thing? All right, so this system is going to be a beast. We've got an i7-13700KF for our processor. We've got an Intermax Liquimax 360 RAD uh, to cool it. For our motherboard, we've got an Asus Prime Z790-A Wi-Fi, uh, 32 gigs of Kingston Fury DDR5-5600 Black RGB. Um, got a Kingston 1TB Fury Renegade for our NVMe main drive. A Western Digital 4 terabyte blue for our storage drive. Fantex Evolve X with the custom paint that we've got right here. Um, seven case fans, 1000 watt fully modular power supply from Fantex as well. Um, and for our video card, we've got an Asus 3070 Ti Tough Edition. That's a so, tough system to, uh, to argue with. <laughs> it sure is. So I think first off, um, it's going to be a lot of puns. I want to bring the case up because this looks amazing. Yeah, this is this is honestly rad. I when you guys said, "Hey, we've made something different," I was like, "Well, cool. What is it? It's going to be great." So, uh, yeah, for anybody who hasn't seen this, now uh, I have a question: When does this case uh, go live on the site, or is this custom special only? Yes, you can order this now. We've got four themed colors, all kind of in the same um, I don't know color palette. They're all they all look really good. The mint one is definitely. Yeah really nice as well so definitely check that out on our website it's like a seat and it's gonna look great especially mm -hmm. with that white base case you got those leds behind that front panel which we'll uh, show a little bit later but yeah this is this is going to be fun yeah it's gonna be so a... uh just for everybody's while they're getting uh some of the base things opened up oh, and unpackaged let's go ahead and cover how you can get so many different entries into our giveaway. First of all, by clicking the link, you'll want to go ahead and follow all the little instructions to unlock the rest of the options. Now, there is also the joy of codes, and we've got tons of codes to give out over this month, and it's going to be wild. You can find codes on our social media. That's YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. You can find them in our Discord through special process called Trivia, uh, and that is at discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. And of course, you can find them over on my Twitch channel, at DJ Blue PDX. Uh, we've got to try and get everybody an opportunity to win this thing uh, as, as and as many people in there as, as we can think of. So super excited. Oh yeah, that thing swings open, by the way, in case, and you've never seen one of these Evolve X, the doors are the most brilliant thing about this. I was really trying it's to just, not it, they're all on hinges with that side panel there. So I was taking my right. time. Well, and what's interesting is uh, what, what you're looking at right there is the back of it. Those are also both panels to hide cable management. It's very, uh, well, it's definitely securely on there. Yeah, these things are on there. Here, let's set this down on its side. I'm always terrified. I'm gonna, it's just going to come loose. I'm going to uppercut myself with one of these side panels. That would not be good. So this is the great way they to are they're they're like lamborghini doors on a pc truly <laughs> yeah. you can just put some pressure with your thumb and wiggle it and there you go nice thank you by the way for the resub with the prime don't forget you can get a ton of entries by subscribing here don't forget you've got your free 
Amazon Prime sub that you can use every month to get yourself some extra entries uh, right in here to our amazing giveaways. Look at the top. It looks so good. I love this color. It's like if Iron Man was grape flavored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. These things come fully covered. They're all over the place, which is awesome. All right. So we'll get these cable management doors off, and then we'll get into the motherboard. I'll go ahead and take out the fans that come in this case. This, came's come, this case comes with three 140 mil RGB fans, and we're going to be taking those out for our, uh, for our seven 120 fans. You de-lavender the lavender system? There you go. Uh, we have not announced the winner yet, but definitely stick around because we are going to do it live here on the show. We usually wait for us to get a little bit farther into the show so you can sit back, relax, and hang out because this is going to be fun. Now, with that being said, uh, let's talk about this motherboard. We'll get to know uh, Hayden is itching to get it out of the box. Mm -hmm. He's trembling over there. I can see him just ready right? to get it open. Anybody who's unaware that uh, Aiden is, what, is the fastest builder in the building and uh, can assemble systems that. in a matter you of minutes. Are. And he is so patient <laughs> and just slowly building it while we're talking about them. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, don't, as a reminder, this uh, show is usually on every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, but not this Thursday because we're going to be flying down to San, sunny San Diego, California for DreamHack San Diego, where we're going to be with the uh, Creator Hub and the BYOC, which may be renamed to something else. But uh, you'll definitely be able to check us out there if you're in the Southern California area and want to get to it. Get, head on over to DreamHack.com uh, to get your passes and come by, say hi, come see us. We got a hype train, level one hype train, 93% of hype. So now we got four minutes, 22 seconds. Uno mas, let's go. Let's get another sub. Oh, thank you for the bits. Woo. That's 100% of level one hype train right there. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Sweet. That is awesome. So much hype. So much wow! Okay. Now, sorry, it's gonna be one of those days. I've had a lot of coffee. All right, let's talk about this uh, this motherboard. This is an Asus Prime Z790A uh, Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a DDR5 board. It's honestly gorgeous. I, I like its approach. It's very future, I would say futuristic in its design, uh, the way that it looks. It's gonna light up incredibly well. We've also got some great examples of uh, cooling for both the North and South Bridge and quite a few different uh, plates for the M.2s. So let's talk about some of the your, your first initial reactions. I love the look of this board. It looks like something that came out of, uh, well, it looks like it came out of Destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, this thing's awesome. So the first thing that like stands out to me about this board is this area right here above our IO and our North Bridge. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what that does. You can see they've got the ROG emblem here, and then it's like fading through that. So I bet that's going to look nice. I'm pretty sure it lights up blue. Lights up blue? Like okay. Light blue. Yeah, that would look good. Yes. Yeah. It has the button. The button. Yep. That was the next thing I was going to bring up. That's the best thing. That, The favorite thing. Now, mm -hmm. what, explain why the button is important and how it's useful. Yeah. So what this button does is it releases this PCIe clip you can see right here. Let me go ahead in. So. Usually, on a, this is obviously a really high-end board going into a nice system, so most likely the card's going to be pretty large with a backplate on it. So if we need to uninstall that card, it can be kind of a pain when it's installed if the backplate's sticking out a little bit to get your finger in and press this down. So they've, they've put this button on the board, and we're starting to see this a little bit more commonplace now on the higher-end boards. So you can just press that to release the PCIe clip so you can take your card out. I really like that. I think every board should have that, at least on that slot. I agree. I like um, the four slots for the M.2s as well. Yeah, right. The four slots for the M.2. And this one looks pretty beefy. Beefier mm -hmm. than normal, so. I think that might be... <laughs> Trash Cat <laughs> Dog is... Uh, cr Trash Cat Dog playing Power Watch Simulator. That is almost as relaxing as building PCs. Yeah. I'm going to be really honest. Uh, don't forget, if you hear something that is said in this in this uh, show that you're not quite familiar with or you have a question, that's why we're here. Please feel free to load your questions into the chat. I'm going to keep my eyes on the chat to make sure I can answer anything 
that uh, may come up. We also got a sub coming in from Gummy Bear Ninja. Uh, not Dajobu. I feel like I've ruined your name, and I'm so sorry about that. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for the bits. We are at, uh, we have, what, 55% of the next level of, uh, of hype. So much hype. So much wow. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Wi-Fi is built into this board. Let's talk about mm -hmm. the connectivity while we're getting into this, because uh, I think that's definitely oop, important. Uh, so it is, comes Wi-Fi 6E. And it also has an Intel two and a half gig Ethernet uh, port, which is lightning fast. On top of that, you've also got a few other elements for connectivity in here. We've got a ton of in, of uh, USB threes, including USB Cs, and then it does actually have two front ports for USB two if you need them. But uh, right now, as you can see right there on that IO shield, you've got your HDMI, you've got your Display Port. There is a uh, one USB three point two Type C, and then you've got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A's right there. Plus, uh, down below the Ethernet, you've got two special USB uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, two Type A's and one Type C. So, lots of, lots of things to plug in. Now, I also notice that there's... Oh, there is a little bit of a difference here with what I'm looking at. Nice. It's the same one. That's a, bri a Prime Z790A. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. Right, it's the right one. So let's, let's go jump into the heat sinks. I know you're wanting to dive into this board fairly quickly. Talking to Hayden. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we got, we have our heat sink up here. And then, like Paul was saying, there's this uh, M.2 cover with a heat sink on it, and it's pretty thick. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Nice. It has, like, extra cooling. I, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I feel like that's probably a fairly heavy board, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty beefy. Uh, did we just get a code drop? Code drop! Lav IV67 interesting variety 67 all right so i have a correction to make dj I, my notes were wrong this is a asus strix z 790 a gaming okay. wi-fi my fault on there that. we go i was wondering because i'm looking at the picture like this looks different than what yeah. i'm looking at <laughs> okay, okay so okay let me go grab the stats because i may have misspoken everybody just hang on <laughs> it's okay yeah, the I.O. is going to be a little bit different. Prime. This is going to have some extra ports as well. So I'm sure it has all that you said with an extra Type-C as well. Yeah. So that'll be our yep. fast one. Um, I'll go ahead and give Hayden the processor oh, this here. This is definitely a step up. Open. All right. Yeah, definitely more ports on this than we thought uh, when it comes to your connectivity. So a bunch of, you've got all four of your 3.2s. Then you've got your high speed 3.2 Gen 2s that are gonna be, as you can see the SSD, it's 10 gigs per second up and down on those two that are that are right there next to your ethernet point. Still a two and a half gig ethernet, still Wi-Fi 6E, uh, along with an expanded audio section. As you can see, popping that Intel Core i7-13700KF into there. Mm-hmm. Now, we're going to be cooling this wonderful machine with an Enermax Liquimax 3 ARGB closed loop cooler. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, just in the event that you don't know what these do, uh, Paul, what, how, how does this work? And yeah. what are the different ways to cool a CPU? Yeah, so you can see Hayden's got our CPU installed there. So what he's going to be working with next is the hardware to mount this. So this is our AIO I've got in my hand. You can see it here. Our pump is in here and then our cold plate. This is what will actually mount to the CPU and cool it. Now, obviously, we'll put some thermal paste on the processor to get a good heat transfer here. Um, and then we'll have to screw in some brackets for this board as well. So. Uh, most AIOs are going to come with a bunch of hardware. You can see that's what Hayden's working with in the background there. So he's getting all the hardware for this socket. Um, it's going to come with AMD socket, a few different AMD sockets, a few different Intel sockets. So that's what he's working with now. And you can see the holes 
Let me angle this board a little bit. You can see the holes there, oh, yeah, there on the are. processor. So that's where we're going to put a backplate on. There'll be some standoffs coming through there. You can see <laughs> Hayden making sure he's got the right one there. And uh, yes, to answer your question, the... Oh, I've already got it. Yeah, the question uh, was, how much would this PC cost to build? And it sits right about 3600 There we go. Here. Perfect. Uh, it's usually somewhere available. It definitely is. And a huge shout out and thank you, uh, by the way, to Asus, Kingston, and Fantex for partnering up with us with regards to all of the elements that are going into this machine, uh, which is super fun. <clears throat> Gotta love it. Fantex makes multiple different types of cases. What are the, what's the most popular ones, Paul? Yeah, so the ones that we see the most here are the Evolve X. Now their Cube is starting to be, gain a lot of popularity. That's their new one. It looks like the O11. Um, got, got a few different design um, elements to it, though. Uh, we did one of those. Actually, that's this one, the last month's giveaway. That was our Cube that we built on yeah. show there. Um, they also have the Elite, which is the giant one that we will get on this show one day. It's the one we always talk about that can fit 200 fans or whatever it is in it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like That's Fantex. Be wild. I have an Evolve X for my personal rig at home. Every All their stuff is quality. They've got P500, which is a new one that's really cool. Um, G500, which is kind of the favorite. successor to that. And then you got P400, P300 for more of a smaller tower builds as well. Nice. Uh, it, going back to the lighting on this, it is a little bit different than the um, than the Prime. Obviously, you've got that giant Strix box. It's going to be lit. It's also got backlight backlighting as well, mm -hmm. so which is great. I don't know if we've already gotten. Did you already pull that M.2 and place that drive in there? Oh, we have not I put have that not. in there yet. Good. Okay, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. Uh, BBH Aaron asks: Are tattoos required to properly build a PC? I'm going to say it's definitely they not going to hurt you. Yes, they help. Yes. Yeah. They do. They help. Uh, let me get through some of these questions real quick. Uh, Davino just bought a PC from you guys, uh, which is nice. awesome. Thank nice. you so much. And yeah, you didn't know the case would be that pretty. It, yeah, these the cases here are absolutely nuts. I love them. Um, watch this says. Yeah, they're all. The new one for April isn't working for me. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, you just need to apparently you just need to re-log in for that one. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with that website, so that's a little bit out of my range of things that I could answer. There we go. Yes, uh, tattoos help with patience. Exactly. Mm. Uh, as as far as uh, connections on this board, it does come with multiple different PCIe slots. Yeah, so you can see the top one that we talked a little bit about there with the button and the release. <laughs> so under that, mm -hmm. we've got a PCIe by one, this little stubby guy right here. I'll angle this a little bit up, try to get better reflection on the light. So this is our PCIe by one. It's a little stubby one. And then we've got two more PCIe by 16s. Oops, now, sorry, what is a PCIe one usually used for? Here. So it's usually for like a wireless card. Um, some sound cards will use a PCIe by one and maybe a capture card. It depends on your capture card, though. Some of those are by four or by eight. Gotcha. All right, now we're gonna take off that top heat sink. Mm -hmm. Now going into this is our, the first of our two hard drives are gonna be entered in the system. This is a one terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade M.2 NVMe SSD. And that's going underneath the heat sink. Why are the heat sinks important when it comes to M.2s? So this M.2 here uh, is going to generate heat when it's being uh, accessed or used by your system. So this uh, heat sink is going to make that heat dissipate more than it would without it. So you're going to this thing's going to stay cooler, which means it's going to last longer. Um, so that's why here. And you can see as Hayden, uh, he pulled this off and then there was a plastic piece on top of there you saw him take off. Then you see this right here. This is a thermal yeah. pad. So this is the same concept as thermal paste. It's just in a more solid form. And that'll give good heat transfer between the M.2 drive and the heat shield. It's the same things you'll find in like inside your GPU. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, question coming in from the chat is, what mice is everybody running from uh, not uh, 
Daijubu. And I'll be honest, I'm going to side with Zombie Rain on this one. I use the G502X Plus from Logitech. Uh, it's it's a beautiful mouse. It's a great update. I was really jazzed when they sent it to me because I have been... I had been on the old 502, and this is, this is actually lighter, but if you use the puck for the self-charging mat, it's, it, it gives it nice where I like it to be. I'm all about the G502 as well. That's, yeah. I'm on my second one, the regular one. I love it. It's I great. The super light. The super light, yep. I, uh, I love it. I used to use the 903, which is this one, mm -hmm. uh, but until I finally broke the side button after five or six years, it was because I had my on my front thumb button my, hey, pick up things in Dying Light 2, and so every time I tried to have to search a dead body, it just got abused a lot. I see. Yep. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we've got that. So we've got that uh, M.2 in there. Mm -hmm. Now we're ready for the AIO. It looks like. Yeah. So here's a question: You have Hayden. You're putting something in there. Looks like you got a tube of toothpaste. Yeah, Tell everybody what that is. It's a thermal it's compound. Cream. Yeah, it's a uh, it's thermal compound. <laughs> it's that charcoal toothpaste. Yeah. You know? that's why it's great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's yeah. Uh, it's thermal paste, thermal compound. Um, you want to put a pea size amount, and basically that's just gonna take all that heat and dissipate it, and you know, transfer mm -hmm. it all out. Yeah. So your system would run without thermal paste, but you would definitely notice your temperature is getting hot, and if you're gaming, it could lead to you know a shutdown and protect the system. So you definitely got to have thermal paste on your system. This is Arctic Silver Five here. Yeah. It's a great thermal paste. Um, and yeah, once you can see the size he put on there, like you mentioned, he put a pea size on there. Once we get this cold plate on there and tighten down, it'll squash that thermal paste out and spread it around. And then once the system's on and running, when it heats up, that the heat will obviously make the paste a little bit more fluid and it'll spread out even further. Uh, Davino asks, are you guys self-taught PC builders? Um, yeah, I, I well, I had a buddy teach me. I didn't have any... I went to a tech school after I learned how to build a PC to learn more of the electronic side of things, the industrial side. Um, but yeah, I had a buddy right out of high school. He built his own PC on his own, and then he taught me how to do one. So that's I how I learned. I watched YouTube tutorials. You did YouTube tutorials? Nice. Built my own computer, and then yeah. went from there. Mm -hmm. I, uh, other question is, what kind of thermal paste, what thermal compound are you using? So right here, we've got Arctic Silver 5. Um, Arctic Silver is a great brand. It's a really good, um, you know, middle of the road to high end thermal paste. If you, we do have the option to upgrade your thermal paste on our website. And for that right now, we're using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's a very high end thermal paste. Gives you great numbers. A lot of, that's a, that's a mouthful of things to say as well. Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Yeah, they always got some crazy names for their, for their thermal paste. Watch somebody name their kid that. All right. Now, as far as when you're attaching, <laughs> when you're attaching the pump, uh, which is there? A, I would say uh, science behind which direction you want the tubes. You always want to try to make your tubes on the right side, mm -hmm. and then when going to actually mounting your radiator, going to the top or going to the front of the case is the most optimal. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of times we do the top as well. Yeah, the biggest thing when you're when you're mounting an AIO is you want this pump part to be um, at a lower spot than where your tubes are here, and that's just because there's obviously a little bit of air in this system from the factory, and we, and we want that air to stay at the top of the radiator and not get to our pump. Got it. Uh, Night Jabu says, "How did you get into doing this full time?" That's a good question. Oh, so, um, I mean, I was just into gaming. I've always been into gaming. Pretty much everybody here has always, you know, been a gamer. Um, and I just heard through word of mouth. Um, I've been here for, geez, uh, a little over eight years now. So I had a buddy. I was just working at, you know, a payroll company before this, right after I got out of the military. And had a buddy heard about this place and had an interview and got hired and just been here ever since. So how did you hear about it, Hayden? Javi. Javi, Javier, high school. Yeah. yeah, okay. I uh, saw on a Snapchat, like, okay. where do you work? And then as soon as he told me, yeah, I instantly put my application in and had my interview. That's awesome. And we did get another. So uh, watch this. I will be. I'll agree with you. When it comes to, I've always, I've still 
terrified of open loop systems. And that's the big difference between the open and closed. The closed loops are just self-contained as opposed to the open loops where you have to do refills and uh, you risk doing dumb things like me and splashing your motherboard with liquid. <clears throat> Yeah, these What'd AIOs, these, these are the closed loop like you mentioned. These are great to install. If you've never built a machine before, you can install one of these. You just take your time, make sure you get the right hardware. Um, I, I personally always prefer to go with an AIO in my home system because I like to tinker with mine quite a bit. And if you've got an open loop, they look great. Um, but if you ever want to change something, you usually have to drain your whole system. And you know that, that's, a, that's a lot more time than I want to put in every time yeah. I want to mess with my system. Uh, Crash Cat wants to know which branch of the military you were in. Oh, I was in the Air Force. I was an aircraft mechanic on the KC-135, the air refueler, uh, the tankers. It was a really good time. I liked it, but um, just didn't want to make it a career. So. And I, uh, I'm ex-Navy. I was a weapon specialist, and my specialty was VLS systems, so vertical launching missile systems, yeah. which translates to literally nothing in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What can you do? That was Nothing that's legal. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we were not Marines. We did not like the taste of crowns. So, you know, that was not the branch for us. There we go. <laughs> yes. uh, but uh, for all of you who are, who are service members, both present and past, thank you so much for your service. We appreciate you. All right. What's next? All right. So we've got our memory from Kingston here. Oh, let's talk about that. We got two sticks of 16 gig Kingston DDR5 5600 for a total of 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, for those who are unaware, because there are four slots, can you just walk us through the process of knowing which ports to plug those into? Yeah, so if you've got, um, it depends on how many uh, slots your motherboard has. So most motherboards have four slots, some have eight. It's been a while since I've seen eight. That was kind of on some other, you know, high-end builds. I don't see it as much anymore. But anyways, if you've got four slots, 99% of the time, if you have two sticks of RAM, you're going to want to use slot two and four, which is what you can see Hayden did. It's just one, two, three, four. So we're using two and four. Um, if you have one stick, we would use slot one. Um, but always, you know, if you're doing this at home, always consult your motherboard manual. It will tell you exactly where to put that, uh, where to put your sticks in. But 99% of the time, it's going to be two and four for two sticks and one for one stick. There will also on your motherboard be printed somewhere here on the PCB labeling those uh, RAM slots. And so that's what you can use to, um, when you look it up on your motherboard manual to see which slot they're, t they're referring to. Now, when it comes to this motherboard, this is a Z790 chipset. Mm -hmm. But what's the big difference between like a Z790 chipset versus a Z690 chipset? Yeah, so that's going to be, there's a few different generational differences there. Um, but that's going to refer to the, typically it's going to refer to the processor that's going to fit in there. Um, so that's what you want to look at. If you're like, hey, I want a new 13th gen <clears throat> processor, that's what you want to look at, that socket size. Gotcha. All righty. Uh, I will say one other thing that we've got for connectivity that we did not talk about is the Bluetooth on this board. And it's always amazing the new, the new updates and upgrades for Bluetooth. This board not only has the Wi-Fi 6E, but it's also got Bluetooth 5.3. And the Wi-Fi 6E is 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz bandwidths. So now I noticed you pointing at the... I would say the antenna screws mm -hmm. or the mounts yep, the antenna for that. Ports, yep. uh, so does the Wi-Fi work in, if you don't have your antenna plugged in? So technically it will work, um, but you're going to have to have it next, like real close to your router. You definitely want to get your antenna screwed on when you get your system, if you're, if you're going that route. Now we don't ship yeah. with the antennas installed. We used to do that when we were you know, shipping PCs and, and the Wi-Fi was becoming a big thing, but the antennas were breaking off and shipping. And sometimes they wouldn't loosen up off here, so it would actually break this port if we did that. So those antennas will be in your accessory box if you order a system from us. And yeah, definitely screw those on. But yes, it, it should work without, but it's not gonna work as good as it could with, uh, with the antennas installed. So definitely install your antennas if you're using Wi-Fi. Uh, maximum RAM on this board is 128 gigs. So, and it can take up to, uh, technically it can take up to uh, DDR5 6000. That's a fast memory. And then overclocked, it's even more. 
yeah it's it's kind of wild wild uh up to set max is out of 7800 for the overclock so which it yeah, fathoming that's... that speed of ram is is pretty difficult like yeah that's wild it is all righty so all right up build. next yeah let's trade you hey no i'm gonna this put this you're at. bad boy in there All right, as you can see, uh, let's just point out some of the features of this case while we're there. You can notice the sliding plates on the back, which allow for an assist with the cable management. Uh, what else can be used for the, what else can those be used for? So you can pop these out here and you can see these notches right here. You can put in extra hard drive trays that sit out vertically and your hard drive lays in there. Now we don't see that that often because it's got plenty of room in the bottom here under the shroud right here. That's where we're gonna mount our hard drive but if you had you know eight extra hard drives you can mount them there or if you're building an open loop you nice can put a, yep you can put uh reservoirs in there mm -hmm. uh we did have a question coming in from astro dude 1987 he says for two sticks of ram is there any reason for using slots two and four versus one and three yeah so um there's some stuff going on in the motherboard for that and like you mentioned dual channel um that's the big reason there so one and three would also be dual channel, but this motherboard is gonna check to slots two and four first. Um, so that's why you wanna use those instead of one and three. Gotcha. All righty. Up next, we're gonna get this board into this case. What are the things to look out for and to know when you're doing this? Yeah, so if we go back to our overhead shot here real quick, um, what's nice about these white cases is it's really easy to point out the standoff. Sometimes when we're working with a black case, it's hard to see. So these you can see me pointing to in my pen here. These are our standoffs. So this is where our motherboard is gonna sit. These are actually screwed into the case and they have a threaded portion in that our motherboard mounting screw is gonna go into. So you can see we've got three at the top, three in the middle, and three in the bottom. That's our regular ATX uh, configuration here. That's what this motherboard has. So that's what Hayden's gonna set the board on, and then you'll see him uh, use the motherboard screws to mount it to those. And how would you identify which of the holes in the motherboard are the ones you wanna use for the standoffs? Yeah, so you wanna see what type of motherboard you have. This is obviously an ATX case. We have an ATX motherboard, so it's pretty straightforward as this part, but let's say you have an MATX board and you're just wanting to upgrade your case, you want something bigger. So you could put an MATX motherboard in here, which is smaller than ATX, and down here, it's very hard to see um, on camera, but in person, there's printings next to each of these standoffs holes that say like, like this one says A slash M. So we know this part, this spot is used for an ATX and an MATX board. So you just wanna see that, um, you know, look at your standoffs holes, it'll have it printed on there, or most cases have it printed on there. If it doesn't have it printed, you can take all the standoffs out, set your motherboard in there just to see which holes it lines up with, and then take your motherboard out, obviously, and put the standoffs in where the holes were. Awesome. Uh, we did have a great question coming in from uh where'd it, where'd it go from zombie rain do you think there will ever be a board with even more ram space that isn't a server and honestly we've had boards that have come through here for our for our customer builds that can max out at 196. that's the highest i think i've ever seen on the show is a board that will take 196 to four slots but yeah all right next up let's get that baby inside And once again, notice the little, you can see them. There are nine of them, but they are holes with little silver, it looks like almost rivets or coating around them. And those are what are gonna connect to your standoff so you can create uh, a static free environment. How do you, and I did see this question earlier and I missed it and it's all coming back in my head. Uh, we had a question from somebody asking about the effects of a magnetic screwdriver on mm. electronics. Good yeah. question. Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, back in the day when when I first built my PC, you didn't want to have any magnets near your machine. You had your CRT monitor, which could break your monitor if you put a magnet there. Um, but the big thing why we were so worried about having a magnet near your PC is that back then, most of everything was stored on physical hard drives, which stores the data magnetically. 
So if you ran a magnet across your hard drive, it could pull all the data off and mess up your hard drive. Nowadays, everything on this motherboard is a solid state component along with our M.2 drive there. We obviously are using a physical hard drive for our secondary storage, so we won't be rubbing a magnet across this, but it's not in the system right, right now. And <clears throat> while we're doing all this, it's totally fine to use a magnetic screwdriver. Uh, Davina, if I'm understanding your question correctly, uh, you're asking what's the big difference between and why you would need 128 gigs of RAM or what kind of performance improvement having that level of RAM? Is that what you were asking? I know we're on oh, a little bit of delay, so we're glad to come in there. Satisfying ratchet noise. <laughs> right? That's good. It helps. I like it. it. Yeah, so uh, it Paul or mm -hmm. Hayden, who, uh, can one of you tackle this? What kind of performance improvements do you get or do you experience with larger amounts of RAM in the system? Yeah, so when you're talking about that much memory, this system obviously has 32 gigs of memory. That's gonna play any game great. Going from 32 to 64, even 128, probably not gonna notice a big difference in frames on gaming. Where you will notice that difference is if you're doing any video editing, rendering, Adobe, any types of those software, those heavily benefit from RAM. And, you, and if you're using those, that's where you could justify going up to 128 gigs of RAM. Um, if you're just a gamer, you know, 32 yeah. gigs is great. 64, if you really want to go nuts, you know, do that. But I would definitely, um, unless you just, unless you got a money tree in your yard, I would definitely, uh, you know, stay away <laughs> from 128 gigs if you're just gaming. Absolutely. Uh, and one other question. So, and just to be clear, there is no such thing as dumb questions on this show. And I want to keep everybody reminding this. It may feel like, you know, this is something that's easy for people to understand, but that's why we're here, to answer all the questions. And any time that you think you might have a dumb question, just remember this. Somebody sat in a boardroom at some point and said, hey, let's make a movie about a tornado that has sharks in it. And look what happened there. Billion dollar franchise. Terrible, but billion dollar franchise. Uh, so yeah, we, we, uh, we answer all questions, absolutely. Uh, we also had a question about uh, the performance difference from DDR5 versus DDR4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so really what you want to look at for there is speeds. That's the biggest uh, generational difference. So DDR4 is running at 30, typically now what you see is 3200 megahertz. Um, so you can see this is running at 6,000, or sorry, 5600. So just that's the big speed difference right there. Um, eventually, like with DDR4, it started out 2133 was the base. And now it's pretty much 3200. There's a little bit faster than that. But with DDR5, we, you know, we're starting at about 5,200. This is 5,600. Eventually, we will see a 6,400 or even higher. So once it gets yeah. to that 6,400 speed, that's, you know, double 3,200. So it's doubly as fast. A uh, question on how, how well extra RAM is going to help with VR. And I can definitely say that it will, def it will help a lot mm -hmm. uh, with ensuring that you're keeping your frames uh, high, the higher the frame rate, the less likely you are to experience VR sickness. So, yeah. Let's see here. We've also good. Well, now we're putting the fans on. Um, let me just make sure we've all caught up on this. Do y'all have advice? Oh, uh, so question is, is this a good build for a solid single PC stream setup? Yeah, this is a good it's build a for... Yeah, this, this is a beast for streaming. Obviously, you know, depending on what you're streaming, you know, I'm assuming you're going to be streaming 1080 at 60 frames. This will this will handle that very well. Nice. Zion, Zion the Lion, hello, welcome. How's it going? Uh, Bunny, uh, Bunny Mavinus asks, do y'all have advice for someone trying to upgrade their PC or building a new one? My PC is custom built. Uh, my brother did it years ago, and it really needs some upgrades, but I don't know where to start. I don't know much about anything about computer builds. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So first off, you know, find out what you've got. Um, what you're going to want to find out is what CPU you have, and then that will also tell you what CPU socket you have. Um, which will tell you obviously what motherboard socket it is. You can so, search RAM and your Windows and it'll pull up. Mm -hmm. 
yep, the processor. Yep. It'll pull that up. Um, you obviously want to find out what video card is, but you might be able to just go a route where you just need to buy a video card and maybe that, that's what's holding your system back or just a new CPU. <coughs> now, if you've got a pretty old system, you know, a five or six year old system, by this time when you're upgrading, if you're upgrading your processor, most likely you're going to need to upgrade your motherboard as well. So that, that's where you <coughs> get kind of expensive. Um, so, yeah. I will, just to touch on the uh, streaming, whether or not it's a good streaming PC, uh, I'll say this. If you're gaming and streaming from the same unit, you definitely want to uh, invest in a little, in a lot of power for it because it's doing two different task-worthy things right there. But a standard streaming PC, if it's just to be streaming, if you have, say, another computer to game on, like I run a dual PC system, or you're a console gamer, and you want the PC for the streaming, you really don't need a whole lot of power to do that. I'm running a Ryzen 5 uh, 3600X, which is only a six core processor. It's it's old, <laughs> but I have a 1070 and my capture card and I've only got 16 gigs of RAM and I barely ever get above 60, 60% uh, 60 of usage across the board. But if you're gonna be doing them all from the same gaming and streaming from the same system, you've got to consider what quality of the games that you're going to be able to utilize because you've also got to have bandwidth and memory for your stream uh let me go back up we've got so many questions coming in we've already got the fans hooked up um ivory our giveaway entry is locked now you mean for yeah the i for the march is already locked down uh let's see right now i5 12 600 k with a kraken z73 aio that suddenly failed oh no that's unfortunate. Um, I'll have to talk about bottlenecks. Let's see here. Oh, so it's just, Rashiv mentions he booted it up and the LCD screen went pure white, then PC shut down and then red <coughs> light stayed, on, stayed lit on the motherboard. Uh, that is, I, I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, not getting video is, um... You know, a, a good place you want to start there is probably your video card. Um, I don't know if you've got an extra one from an old system or something like that laying around. You could swap out and plug it into a monitor and see. Um, but for an issue like that, usually if a video card's going bad, it doesn't just die just like that. Usually it's like artifacting or just doing weird stuff. You could try to use a different port on your video card. It should have multiple video ports. Maybe just pl unplug the HDMI or DVI or DP, whatever you're using, into a different one and try that out. Um, but it could be, you know, it sounds like it could be a motherboard issue. That there's a lot more uh, troubleshooting that need, that'll need to happen to kind of diagnose yeah. that issue. Um, but I, I've seen it where just a video port on the video card went bad. And so if you've got extras and you're not using them, you can just plug it into that other port and it'll fix it. Uh, questions about BIOS. Is it possible for a motherboard to not have a BIOS or to have the BIOS wiped? Um, so it it is, um, but you are going to need a BIOS to get it running. So um, motherboards will ship with a current BIOS. Now, depending on where you get it from, maybe that motherboard has sat in a warehouse or in inventory somewhere for a while. And so there's a new BIOS that has come out. Um, you don't always need the most um, up to date newest BIOS out there. Um, that that'll depend kind of on it'll depend on your system um, but the BIOS update can fix the issues sometimes yes uh, and we are but yes we have not announced it yet we are getting ready to do that that is coming up fairly soon right now I do want to talk about what's happening in the system as we're building it out now we saw Hayden mounting those fans to the radiator uh, Paul which direction are they going to be blowing in and what's the best practice for mounting your fans to your radiator and your radiator to the case what are the options there yeah so you can see we've got our, ma our radiator mounted to the top it's this little white bar you can see right there the rest of it's tucked up in there and hayden's got his fans here now these fans are <coughs> going to be pushing through the radiator and out the top um, that is the preferred method when you're installing fans on a radiator you can do it that way which like i mentioned is pushing um, if we had them on the other way that would be pulling air through which will still work but it won't be quite as effective as pushing air through or if you have room in your case and you have the extra fans you can do a push pull which has fans on both sides of the radiator um, for a, an increased performance cooling performance there as well nice 
And this is going to be having a total of seven fans, I believe you said. Mm -hmm. Yep, this so one of seven. So where's that, where's that path, path of air going? So this is a more traditional path of air in this case. You can see that hole in the front from this shot right here. Um, we're going to have three fans in the front. That's going to be our main intake. And then we're going to have one in the exhaust that Hayden's installing now. And then our three at the top on the radiator are going to be exhausting as well. So this fan you see right here, this is our case exhaust. We have intake right here in the front, flowing through and exhausting here and here. Uh, we do have a question about, is there a space for push-pull on the front? Ironically, we just did one of those, what was that, last week? Yeah, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday? Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah. So it was, uh, so, it was snug. Yeah. Yep. Go for it. It gets pretty tight in there. So this is a good size case. That's one of the reasons I like this case. But, you know, video cards nowadays are huge. So that's something you want to look at. Um, so if you do a push pull on a radiator, it's obviously going to stick out here on the front. You got to keep in mind your video card's going to be sitting in that top slot and it might extend out quite a bit. Uh, and Broodless Lurker as mentions or asks, so this is a positive air pressure setup. Uh, because we have three intakes and four exhausts, I believe this would be a negative pressure. Yeah, this is going to be slightly negative. Since we have the air pushing through the radiator, that's going to affect a little bit. It's going to be a pretty equal pressure yeah. system, honestly. So, but there are different builds with different cases where we've gotten, we've had positive pressure and like severely positive pressure and severely negative pressure. Mm -hmm. Is there a rule of thumb for what is a best case scenario in those situations? I believe if you look it up, most of the time you're going to want it to be negative pressure. But um, honestly, if you've got enough case fans in there, for me, I don't really have a side on that, you know, argument. If you're, if you've got, if, if you've got case fans, yeah, if you've got nine fans, your your system's going to be cool. Like on my O11, I have the three front fans flipped around. Yeah. Ooh. Just because I have. Mm. Just because you like it, yeah. And there's no issues with temperatures or anything no. there. Uh, good, good question. Uh, not uh, Daijobu, or yeah, I think I said that right. Asks, do you can generally mix fan types like flow optimized versus pressure optimized? And I'm going to be really honest, I didn't know there was a difference. Paul, what's the difference between uh, flow versus pressure optimized fans? Yeah, so you know, back also a few years back, you know, it was a big thing about having like static pressure and different CFMs for your fans. We do like to to answer your question. We do like to keep. Fan type's the same throughout the system. It's a consistent look. Um, but pretty much all fans are RGB now, so they sync up well, obviously keeping them the same. And all fans nowadays are just performing really well. You used to have to worry about that stuff. If you had your fans on a radiator, you wanted you know, a higher CFM um, fan on there than you would your case fan. Um, so that's what that's referring to. Nowadays, honestly, any fan you buy is gonna perform well. Obviously, some are gonna perform better than the others. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, Twitch Storm says uh, they are watching the show while replacing their mom's oil pan on their Mazda CX-3. <laughs> nice. Listen, as long as we keep you entertained, that yeah. is happiness for us. <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, yeah. Mike mentions that it, it can be a problem mixing different fan types, especially ones from different companies, because you end up having to have too many RGB control, uh, control apps or controllers in general. Yeah, if you're going to mix fans, you know, I would go with the standard like not, like just a regular black fan, or I wouldn't mix different RGB fans. That sounds like just a nightmare. It could be too much power to, being drawn and then... Yeah, getting all your software straight to sync them all up and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Davina asks, what kind of uh, video card are we going to be putting in this? Let's talk about that real quick. We're going to be putting in there a tough card. It is an uh, RTX 3070 Ti by Asus. Uh, big shout out and thank you again to Asus for this card. It's kind of, it's all sorts of awesome. And I love the housing on this one. Yeah, this one looks really nice. This is their tough gaming model. Um, it's kind of the the tough is their kind of in middle ground in between, you know, just a regular version of a card and their Strix or ROG cards. I like the tough aesthetic, honestly. It's, it's grown on me a lot. Um, so we'll get this out here. That way we can all take a look at it. 
Uh, the, que the question coming in, is this card white as well? And no, I do not believe that it is. I believe these are black. These come in black. Yeah, this is kind of, the tough is <clears throat> kind of a black, gray, yellowish um, color scheme that they do on theirs. Oh, you know what? There's still a connector in here, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's got a very good point. It, you'd be surprised how difficult it is to find white GPUs. Uh, pretty much, uh, Republic of Gamers, their Strix are the baseline for that. They they make them, but I don't really know of a whole lot of other people with a white that that offer a white pure white housing. Yeah, they are hard so, to find. They look great. They are rare. Uh, so. Jopro has a very interesting question here. Uh, what advice do you have for a PC that's on a hot environment, as in it's a very hot country, and uh, dusty as well? Yeah, so you definitely want to go with something that's got some magnetic filters. That's where you probably want to focus on your case more. And I would obviously go full-size tower, fit a bunch of case fans in there. Um, pretty much every case nowadays is coming with magnetic dust filters, which is a great segue into me showing you the dust filter here. We'll get back to our video card here in a second. So this is our magnetic dust filter for this case. Um, it does just pop into our front panel here. You can see the magnets um, right here on the sides. And there's just these two tabs. And this just sits here. Um, you can also see in this window here, this is where our power supply is going to go. You can see this little screen down here. There's a magnetic filter there as well on a tray. So you definitely want to get something with some dust filters for that. And if you're in a really dusty environment, probably check these once a month and see how they're going. Um. Yeah, uh, I, I the magnetic dust filters are one of my favorite things to ever have come out in the last several years. My first PC that I built, if I've told the story before, had one giant fan in the front and then all the other sides were just mesh magnetic filters and it it never got hot it never got dusty i was blown away by that so it, it was they're actually super helpful mm -hmm. uh speaking of keeping your devices clean and uh properly ventilated let's talk about the feet obviously there's feet on the bottom of this that gives us a nice little bit of a gap there so you've got that air intake on the bottom for your power supply which is mounted down there uh when it comes to placing your pc on things a lot of people ironically will not will put their pc on the carpet what are why is that important to not do that yeah so you want to this gap right here um, now on this PC, this is really just going to be a gap for our power supply to breathe. Um, with this type of our intake being in the front, it's a little less important. But a lot of cases nowadays, like you've seen us build on here, the O11s, the intake is at the bottom. And so this gap here between the bottom of your case and the floor <coughs> is very important to get fresh air in. So my PC is in my basement with carpet. So what I did is I just cut out a rectangle of cardboard, set my machine on that. And that way the hard surface compresses the carpet and you still maintain this gap to get fresh air in. So you can use a piece of wood, tile, anything hard that's gonna, you know, compress the carpet. And uh, the question came in from Davino, how often do you recommend cleaning your PC? And Toxic Rat's response was, I clean mine at the same time I clean my bongs, <laughs> which, <laughs> You know, yeah. it wasn't the answer I expected, but it's definitely the answer <coughs> I needed. <Yeah. laughs> For sure. Hey, at least you, at least you got well yours on played. a schedule, so that's good. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, boy, I'm, no, I can't talk about that. The one time my mom put. Now, okay, I live in Oregon, so it's it's fine here, uh, but. My mom was helping with the dishes one time at my house and she put, she just emptied it all out and put it in the dishwasher. And it was absolutely the worst choice. <laughs> it was just, no, that's not how this works, mom. I know. I didn't, I, I when I opened, yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it was awful, <laughs> but there we go. Um, so we are, we are getting closer to announcing the winner of this, uh, of this giveaway for Mark. I'm excited. I know you're excited. You've all been here so patiently, which is going to be great. Right now, let's talk to uh, Hayden. I know you're back there like a mad scientist. Uh, what you doing? I am just getting... Jason, can we get a top overhead shot, please? Yeah. 
As you can see, I have ran all of my cables across. And then if we can switch back to the front That's so camera. clean. See if we can wow. get a shot of it. They go through the little hole. And then they come out here. And then since we have seven fans, I only need one fan controller. So that fan controller is going to sit right up there. And it'll shut right away with that uh, door panel. I really love the Velcro strips. It makes it, it, it feels like it's cleaner. And it also feels like it just adds to the ability to organize everything properly in the back. Yeah, it also makes it easier mm -hmm. for like going back. And if you need to add something or take something out, you, you got easy access. Yeah, cable management on this case, case is top notch. <clears throat> so, uh, to jump back to one of the, to the to the previous topic of graphics cards, mm -hmm. uh, obviously this is a triple fan that you've got there. It is the seventy the thirty seventy Ti. So uh, let's take a look at the end of it. Now the one thing, I, normally I like a closed end, but this one it looks unique. But you can see all the pipe uh, pipe ends mm -hmm. there. Yeah, you can see all the heat pipes extending out past this. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this plastic off. And, and here from the sweet. side, you can really see how those heat pipes flow and yeah. wrap around. They obviously have these fins around the heat pipes, and that allows the heat to travel through those fins, and then the fans pull the heat away from there. Nice. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Bit confused. Uh, uh, giveaway meaning you make a PC, a new give. Yeah. Yep, every month we do a we do a PC giveaway. Uh question coming in from uh not Dajobu, is it a triple uh is that a triple slot? Yeah, so this is um if you're looking at this, I think you would technically call this a two slot card because it has two slot points there. But if you see that the shroud extends past, it's probably a two and a half. I'd still call this a three slot card. Um if you're planning on installing another card under this, I'd plan to have three slots open for it. Crusading Duck asks, how do you feel about a non-overclocked 952 gig running VR? Because I've got mine doing that and it hasn't exploded yet. Uh, you're very lucky and congratulations. Well, I would say your days are numbered, but that's just... Me. Yes. But hey, if it's working, that's awesome. That, uh, yeah, that yeah, 950 is putting in work on some VR. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you've got it going. GG. You kind of you you've done it. <laughs> yeah. The you uh, have yeah. won the silicon lottery. Now, speaking of all things silicon, let's talk about that PCB and how, the size of the cooling on this, and uh, let's walk them through our example piece because I don't know that a lot of people have seen what a graphics card actually is on the inside. Yeah. So, um, I've got a 1050 Ti down here. I will show you guys this in just a sec. But what I want to point out here is our PCB, which is the actual board that this card is. It's kind of this greenish orangish line that you can see right here stands out from all the other parts. So that's what I want to show you. And obviously it stops right here and the video card obviously extends out more and that's for these heat pipes and fins. And you can see this hole right here for this fan to even cool this even better. So, now going to my EVGA 1050 Ti here. This is a dead out of warranty card, so we get to take it apart and use it as an example here. So you can see our PCB. Um, I'll hold up this 3070 Ti to show similar. Obviously our 3070 Ti, the PCB is a little bit longer, but not by much. Um, so if we take out these screws, we'll show you what a, what a video card actually looks like under all this stuff. So this is your video card right here. It's this thin card, honestly looks like a sound card. It's, you know, our GPU is right here. That's why you can see thermal paste on it. We've got our memory chips around here. Um, but we like showing this because this shows you what a video card is. If I were to take apart this 3070 Ti, it would be just this size. Now, obviously the PCB would be a little bit longer, um, but it would be just like this. So this just shows you that the bulk of a video card is really just managing the heat that it makes. Yeah, and this was just always mind blowing right? to me that this is a video card, so small. The first time you showed me that, I I about fell over. <laughs> what do you mean? That's all that's in a video card. That's it. <laughs> you know, and what, 
And it's funny because I look at, uh, in my streaming PC, I have a 1070. In my gaming PC, I have a 2070. And just the, the sheer size difference between those two cards alone is mm -hmm. fascinating. So, um, you you think it's time? You think it's time to uh, draw the winner there, Ivory? Ooh. I feel like it may be time to see who's won the amazing PC in the back. A brand new cube from Fantex with an incredible processor and more importantly, the very first uh, A770 by Intel. Their brand new graphics card is back there. So, every, I know everybody's been anxious. And don't forget, there's tons of people involved in this and i'm just waiting for the word of when to say who or what it is and best of luck everybody oh, oh, oh. and may the odds oh, be oh. ever in your favor do all need, right do we need a you are five thousand inches that's yeah. awesome temperance now i will say that uh with the new with the new giveaway i will be giving away a code today uh on my channel after this show is over so if you need more entries for this, that's definitely something that'll happen a little bit later in the day. And let's go Hunger Games. What? <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Alrighty. It looks like do, 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 do. they're drawing the winner right now. Oh, good luck, everyone. Yep, and there we go. Let's go ahead and talk about while they're doing that. We're going to talk about what's in that. That CLX marked giveaway is an Intel Core i7 13700K. It's got a Fantex Glacier 1 240 uh, liquid cooler in there on an Asus Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi Fi board. 32 gigs of Trident and Z, uh, Z Neo RGB RAM with the Intel Arc A770 16 gig graphics card plus a one terabyte Samsung 980M.2 SSD and a four terabyte Western Digital hard drive with a 256 meg cache. It's got a Magnum Gear Neo Cube V2 Black, that is the case it's in, plus all of the uh, GameDS Aeolus M2 fans. And finally, a Fantex Amp Modular 1000 watt 80 plus gold power supply. And now, here we go. We shall. Here we go. Your beautiful mullet will be gone. Yeah, Don't get rid of the mullet. What do heck? The winner is. I know, right? So suspenseful. Uh, uh, Blood wants to know what's the CLX opinion on the arc cards. Big fan. I like them. I like that Intel went for the middle tier. That's the biggest market part for the regular everyday gamer. I love that they went that uh, route. Obviously, there was a few hiccups at the beginning, which is to be expected for anything brand new. Um, but those all seem to be fixed now, and they perform great, and they look awesome, too. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. You click cancel instead of draw winner? What the... <laughs> you are such a troll, I free. I love it. <laughs> Everybody's over here just freaking out, <clears throat> which is awesome. Uh, while we're doing that, let's. We've got all that cable management happening in the back. Why is it important to make sure that your cable management is in order? So the biggest practical reason would be your airflow. airflow. Yep. What else, Hayden? Airflow. Um, if you ever down the line need to add something, or like I said, take stuff out, having everything tied up and cable managed makes everything a lot easier. Because if it's not and it's a you know a mess, you're not gonna be able to navigate and do anything. Mm -hmm. This is really airflow is number one. Really pleasing to look at too. Yeah, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Do we have all right a winner? Nirapuga, that seriously, that was one of the funniest codes I have ever seen. All right. Now we're just waiting. I know, I, it's like the anticipation is swallowing us up. Mm -hmm. It's like Let's that, go. Like that scene in Kung Pao where the girl's running to him. It just never stops. <laughs> right? I'm coming. 
All right. The other thing we're going to have to be putting in here, <coughs> that's uh, when we have a chance, let's talk about the power supply. So uh, our power supply is going to be a 1,000 watt Fantex Amp Series 80 plus gold, and it is the white edition. So it's going to match this case incredibly well. All righty. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna announce it. It is on Twitter. They are Elijah Buzz, but here on Twitch, it's Stingers. Is Stingers present? Is Stingers here? At Stingers. Let's see here. There, Stingers is not here. Uh, I am going to uh, definitely message them. So uh, Stingers is looks like it's from Toronto. There we go. Awesome. Just like Bieber. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if Bieber's from Toronto, but it's all the same, right? Right. Mm hmm. Give you this. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Cash. There we go. All right. So Stingers, also known as Elisha Buzz, is uh, our winner. Congratulations. Congrats. We pronounced Toxic Rat wrong when you announced that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to Stingers. Now, that does, we have a 24-hour period. They have to claim it within, I believe it's 24 hours. And, uh, yeah, we will let you know if that is, uh, if that does not happen. So, right, he has 24 hours to grab that. Now, let's talk about the power supply real fast because the power supply definitely looks like it uh, has pieces. Got all these cables. So what kind of power supply is that? So this is our fully modular Fantex 1000 watt amp edition power supply. I love that it's in white, stays on theme with the case, looks great. Um, but biggest thing about it is that it's fully modular. So you can see I've got the whole brick here in my hand. No cables have been pre-soldered in. Um, so I was opening up all these cables <coughs> here. We'll go through, pick out the ones we need for this build, use those and put the rest in the accessory box. Um, so that's what's great about these modular power supplies. Easier to cable management, looks better, and just less cables in your case that you don't need. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and what uh, what goes into the process of understanding where they get to be plugged in at? Because yeah, that's so, always one thing that confused the daylights out of me. Yeah, so I wish this would be a standard on more power supplies. Most fully modular power supplies follow this. EVGA does, Fantex does, <laughs> um, but some don't. So I'll try to catch this at a good angle on light. There we go. You can see the gray text around these. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, just as a reminder, everybody, this is for the winner of March, not that uh, we're building April. So this PC is going to be the one that we're going to be giving away at the end of this month. So uh, we do this at the beginning of the month, the first show of the month. We always build out our uh, our giveaway build, and that's so it's it's there. We've got it to look at. Absolutely. Yeah, we're building we're building April's right now. This the winner was for March. All righty. Uh, so back to what you were saying about the power supply, sir. All right, so yes, yeah, so you can see on the ports here, you can see this tech, that's a great shot. So you can see this is um, showing you which uh, which cable goes goes where. So you can see we've got CPU slash PCIe here, motherboard here, SATA slash Molex. So that's telling you where that needs to be plugged in. And then also on the cable itself, so let's say this is a CPU cable, so we'll plug it in here to our CPU like this. And then on the end of the cable itself, they've printed CPU, which I love. Not all uh, power supply manufacturers are putting the labeling on this side of the cable. I think that should be a requirement. Um, it makes yeah. it super easy to find out. Make so sure that, that's how you'll find out. Yep. So I'll go ahead and uh, give this one to Hayden. 
Go ahead. All right. A couple quick things. You can always go back over to our YouTube channel and check out all of our past vi our past builds, including the brand new Hawthor, which is a PC inside of a PC, and of course each month's giveaway build, which is also a lot of fun. Now we did get a question that's not necessarily related to PCs, but it's definitely an interesting question. They want to know about Paul's watch. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is an expensive one, guys. This is up there with Rolex. You know, this is uh, probably a thirty dollar Casio right here. So you know, <laughs> you know, don't. If you see me walking on the street, don't try to take it, please. He's got a silver one <clears throat> and a gold one. Yeah, I've got a, a silver one. I love these ones. They're like old school style, vintage. I like them. They're they're great. They're durable. I've got a gold one as well to match this one. The gold is the gold is pretty sweet. But yeah, it's just a regular Casio. I thought about yep. getting the one with uh, the uh, calculator on there, but you know, yeah. you know, right? haven't evolved right? to that yet. Uh, we got a question: Am I going to be playing Dying Light uh, D two? Sorry, Destiny two today? Yes, yes, I am. Do you try to get my light level up over eighteen hundred? That's my goal. Oops, sorry. So, I usually cut these for Let's... you, but I didn't today. You're good. Which one are you looking for? I was seeing if there was like a double Seda. A double Seda, yeah. Sometimes there looks like they just gave us a double oh. Molex. Gross. All good. Oh wait, here. You so let's one? see. Here. Brute also asks, uh, why no anti-static bands or gloves? Such risks. Uh, they're actually on the anti-static pads. Yeah. So this is this is mounted uh, or sorry, built on an anti-static mat here. That's what we use here. We do have wristbands that we we'll use sometimes if we're building in kind of a sketchy environment, but. For any static, if you're working on a PC and you don't have any of those available to you, just touch the side of your machine every so often. This case is a grounding point. You'll ground yourself to it. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's why. Nice. Uh, Zombies Intermax Liquimax 360 yes. AIO just arrived. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's, uh, that's those are really fun. good. Mm -hmm. Those are, those are really good. Yeah. Well, it's only if you have a two, though. Yeah, I don't know. So... Something to point out with this power supply, that's the first time I've seen it. And I've, I've heard that power supply manufacturers were including this now, but this is the first one I've seen. So Fantex has included an extra cable in here. This wasn't even in those bags. So I think they're just throwing one in now. They probably oh, yeah. made these and throwing them in. You can see this is for um, our 12 pin, our 12 uh, for like 40, 90 founders cards. They've included this, which is pretty nice. So we don't have to use the dongle. Now, I've only ever seen the cable mod one. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that they were doing this, and I've seen a lot of people are making different options. But this is nice. So now you don't have this, to use a dongle. Yeah, this card has two regular eight pins, so that's great. We won't need this cable, but this is this is cool that they're including it now. Uh, Vextrix, by the way, is in here. Vextrix, as uh, my Celex, uh system was assembled this morning, according to the website. So excited, uh, we are awesome. too. And also, I want to point out that Vex, the last three codes, uh, code riddles that I made. Vex is the first person to get all of them, and they were not easy. That last one was, on Sunday, was definitely not, or on Friday, I'm sorry, was not easy. Dang. And it was, um, what was it? It was, it was, it was 40, or was the EA 40, uh, 44 EA, 45 EA, and I, I worked in a sentence of talking about some of my favorites, um, EA, uh, what you know? What are what, what's your top favorite games out of the first uh, forty-four EA games to be produced? Hmm. That was how I that was how I coded the message and took Vex like, yeah, thirty-five something like that, thirty-five EA, and Vex figured it out within a matter of minutes. Man. It was ridiculous. Big brain on it was, Vex. It, it was big brain on Vex. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so for, and for anybody who under, who, who's wondering, what on my channel when I give away the codes, there is it is always it is always a puzzle. <laughs> I always make a puzzle out of it. So there you go. And again, we will have a code given out, given out today on the stream. <clears throat> now, you're getting that all mounted in there. That airflow. How often should you be changing out that vent cover on the bottom of the PC for your power supply? So I'd probably look every six months. Yeah, Maybe you don't have to months. do it that often. If Depends you're living, if you have pets. Yeah, say if, if you're one of those, um, you know, people with 18 dogs and 26 cats, you yeah. know, you might want to change it out every month or so or check it every month. But you really don't have to do it very frequently. I would say every oh, six months. 
that's that's the other one that was the one temperance yeah the one on friday the one that friday that was um i said you know the, making sure that you're going to college uh at a time when it's right for you is so important uh i got my bachelor's at 44 which is not true but uh the the code was ba44 and vex walks in hears it like twice and nails it i was like what do you mean <laughs> it took everybody a few minutes to figure that one out yeah uh well you know what game changer we're 12 pcs to give away this year it's gonna be awesome oh yeah yahtzee online that was so great <laughs> yahtzee online uh version six because it was y o v six was hilarious so hilarious all right they got all your tags on there in the back Get now there. hayden likes to uh save save all the tabs to cut off all at the same time yeah let's see if we can get a little <laughs> bit better background to show you this chaos hayden's working with i don't know how you do it hayden. <laughs> look at all this <laughs> <laughs> you think that's it's a very tactile you situation the elite. yeah oh yeah uh, the elite gets pretty rough so, so uh, Rootless asks, My security yeah, system. Rootless asks, how long have we been doing monthly giveaways, and how long do we plan to do them? Yeah, um, let's see. When was our first one? It, this show feels like December? a new thing to us. Yeah, maybe December, but if, every time we go back, November, we've been December? doing it for so long. Back yeah. to the show, yeah. the giveaways. The giveaways, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. I think we started giveaways in December, and we definitely plan on doing, you know, um one a month for the foreseeable future so as long as we can keep yeah. doing it um appreciate everybody coming yep. out and watching that that really helps us that's the make it possible factor. so just the more you're yeah. here the more we can do agreed so uh let's see here next up what are we doing next All right now i'm plugging in the cpu perfect so yeah, we've got our power supply installed. You can see Hayden's uh, managed all of uh, the case cables and the fan cables, and that's what all that, all those zip ties that were hanging out that I was running my hand through here were for. So now he's got his power supply in and plugging in the power supply cables and managing those. And once these are in, um, it'll be cutting those zip ties. We'll install our, uh, our secondary stores, that four terabyte Western digital drive, um, and then the video card, and we'll pretty much be there, so. Nicole mentions that actually October was our very first giveaway. October, okay, yeah. So there we go. There's an answer for that one. Uh, and so uh, Brutless wants to know, is this case a full or mid? So this is a, this is, I would say it's a full tower. Yeah. It might be a mid. Um, so the, ver the wording on those is kind of confusing. So a mid tower you would think would be for like an MATX case, but a mid tower is still a full ATX. I would call this a full with like their P400 being more of a mid, their P300 being a 400 yeah. mid. Full full is so such a big range. It can be this to the elite. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. She likes to peel and cut ties. Someone who enjoys, yeah. Honestly, it's when he cuts all of them off. It's going to be funny. You're going to see he's going to get this hilarious grin on his face. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good stuff. All right. So while we're getting this in there, I want to take a second to tell everybody to, to talk with everybody about uh, how they can go about checking out what's up with our computers and seeing how you could order your own PC. If we're ready, let's do just it. Just a sec here, DJ. We're adjusting uh, the side oh, shot got it. here. <clears throat> And then we'll be good. Please just don't cut an angle. Yeah. All right. Should be about ready now, DJ, if you want to let Jason know. Perf Perfect. Uh, Jason, are we? If we're ready, let's do it. Uh, at CLXGaming.com, we try and make it the as easy as possible to assemble your PC to meet your needs and also to uh, meet your branding. From our website, you can custom design and build your choice of anything from cases to motherboards to CPUs. All of those options are yours 
to design. And the best part is you don't have to be an expert to do so. With our custom, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wow, I just configurator. missed my whole thing. There we go, the configurator. We can, good grief. Uh, we can make sure that you don't actually have incompatible parts. If you choose something that's not necessarily compatible with other elements in your structure, it'll say solve conflict. By clicking on that, it'll give you all the options of how to solve it. So for example, here, you wanna choose a motherboard that's gonna meet the processor or a processor that's gonna meet the motherboard. Once you fix that, you're all compatible and you're ready to go. From, and you don't have to be somebody who only builds their PCs by custom. We have hundreds of models ready to ship that have already been tested and are waiting for a brand new home. So check it out, cluxgaming.com for your next PC and step your game up to the next level. There we go. I know. I don't know why I just struggled and had a brain fart. That was ridiculous. Uh, we've also got some really good specials. If you type exclamation special in the chat, uh, you can, you'll get to see our special editions. They're really incredible designs uh, by several, two different amazing artists here on site with CLX. All right. I see you boys back there focusing on something. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, we're getting this hard drive installed. We'll show you this real quick. And that, right. that hard drive, by the way, is a Western Digital Blue 4 terabyte hard disk drive. Yeah, so, uh, that, sorry, they just went got production in my ear. Uh, if we want, let's let's check that out. Let's go to the special editions and also show them some of the new colors while we're getting that all set up. Uh, <coughs> we've got a brand new color wave that's coming off, uh, that's coming around. We've got the mint, the blue, the pink, and the purple, lavender, I guess you can call it. Mm -hmm. uh, great for springtime and yeah, $150 off a new painted CLX PC. So check that out. Yeah, these paint, these paint now, designs look great. They're all hand painted by Dave here. Um, he does a great job. He used to custom paint motorcycles, so it's pretty cool to see what he can do. Speaking of uh, things that you can do, the one thing that I do love talking about is what happens with these builds, and that includes our ready-to-ship builds once they're all assembled, because they're all assembled, they're in-house. Then what do you do once you build them? Yeah, so once a machine is built here, from there, uh, we make sure it turns on, obviously, and then we take it into our testing and integration department. We do a few things there. The first thing is we get into the BIOS. We'll make sure our RAM speed is set correctly. Um, there's a few other things in there we'll do. We'll make sure all of our storage devices are showing up. Um, depending on the operating system, we have to turn Secure Boot on for Windows 11, so we'll do all that there. Um, then after that, we'll load the operating system and any games the customer has selected or that we just want to put on there um, if it's a machine for us. Um, and then after that, we stress test the system for 12 hours. So what that means is we've got a few different benchmarking softwares we use. Uh, 3D Mark is the main one, but we also use Prime, Furmark, and a couple others, depending on the configuration of the system. And then we run those for 12 hours. And what that does is allows us to catch any defects from the factory. So I always use RAM as an example. Maybe a stick of RAM in this system will work, allow your mas uh, machine to turn on and get video, but once you're in a gaming environment, something about it causes it to fail. So our stress test allows us to catch that, repair it here, then we'll stress test it again, and as long as it passes, we'll ship it along. So um, it allows us to get a stable system to the customer doing that. Awesome. And a uh, question coming in from uh, Bunny May Venus uh, says, I don't know what I need if I were to go do a custom build, I want to be able to run games with decent graphics and be able to stream at a decent quality too. But I don't want to get the most expensive of everything, you know? Um, Got to save money somewhere. Absolutely excellent point. And that mm -hmm. is why our customer service is legendary when it comes to helping people with that. We both got it available for chat from the website, or you can also call in and they can help guide you through the process of, uh, of what you might want to get and what you might want to do. Toxic Rat says, stress test equals war zone at highest settings. Does it lag? <laughs> yes, it's Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, CS uh, says, Vex mentions, uh, CS helped my husband build my PC. That's awesome. Yeah, they're they're very knowledgeable people and very nice. Yeah, our support staff here is great. Um, pretty much every one of them is a gamer as well. So if you're not sure what to go with, you know, call in, come over, chat, let them know what games you're trying to play, and then they can they can configure configure you something, you know, that meets your needs. 
Absolutely. All right, are you ready to do your uh, slice and dice there, guy? Yep. Oh, man, it's time. <laughs> Everybody's wanting to watch this. Here we go. Okay, let's uh, let's get it over here. We'll go back to the. Can we switch to the other shot there, Jason. The other sign shot. There we go. Okay, we kind of yep. got the. There we go. Around. And we're gonna go yeah, watch him. Here you go, Hayden. How many? You, how many? You, let's let's see how many zip ties he's got. Put your guesses out there in chat. I'm gonna say 22. I think I overdid it. See what I mean about the goofy grin he starts getting? It just keeps getting bigger. It's just building and building. <laughs> 16, you might be a little closer to me at 16. All right, how many you got there, Hayden? Counting it out. He's counting in his head to keep us all. 14. 14? Dang, I'm 14. way overshot. All right, there we go. Whoever did 14. the $1 bob in chat wins. Whoever said 16 was. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you go over, it doesn't count. So close. This is like Price is Right. Oh, okay. You're yeah. right, you're right, uh -huh. you're right. Yeah. One zip tie. I was a I was a Price is Right master, so yeah. <laughs> showcase show. All right, man. next up. So exciting. Now we just got to get the graphics card in there. Now, all right. We have seen in the past right, the on. need for uh, straps. Yeah, a what brace are, oh for the God. video card. Why am I having a stroke GPU today? Bracket. GPU bracket, GPU, GPU bracket, GPU brace, anti sag Good. device. <laughs> a lot of different names for it. Um, so yeah, we definitely yes. use those a lot here. With this video card, it doesn't extend out too long and it's not too heavy, so we're not gonna need one for this system. Now, when this, when this system does ship, we have uh, packing material and foam that we will put inside. Um, we basically crack this foam packet, place it in here, and it will auto form around all the gaps here, fill in all the gaps. So that will be there when it ships, but this, this video card won't have an issue with sagging, so we don't need a bracket for this one. All righty, Hayden. Let's see here. Uh, so here we go. Yeah, body maneuvers. Uh, I agree. Sometimes it does. Being on the phone constantly, just like, er. uh, perfectly sane. Says the power light on the top of my PC is dim, and when I start up small games like Minecraft or something, the PC starts running so slow. This started happening about a month ago. Anyone know how I can fix this? Hmm. For starting up Minecraft, I mean, I'm assuming you have a decent PC. That shouldn't really cause your whole system to run slow. Um, you might just run like disk cleanup or disk defrag, something like that. If you've got an M.2 drive or a solid state drive, do not run defrag on that drive because that will mess it up. But if you've got like a regular mechanical drive, do that. That's the first couple things. If, you're, if your system is slowing down when you're opening a game, there's something weird going on. Yeah. It's, it's probably All not right, a hardware got issue, but... So now we've got that uh, the big eight pin, mm -hmm. four by four, going in there. And again, you can see just well, just slightly underneath that one, the lower tube for the AIO, you can see where the button is for the eject on that card, which is nice. In the event you have to get it out, I I wish I'm hoping that every manufacturer starts adopting that. Yeah, I really like it. Um... Some people kind of think it's gimmicky. I don't. I love it. Being a builder myself, I, like I think it. it's great. I realize, you know, most people aren't going to be pulling a video card out of their case that often, but in the event that you need to, it's super convenient. As opposed to trying to stick like a, if your finger can't get down here to press this, I mean, you don't want to be sticking like a flathead screwdriver or anything to pop that clip up. So I love the button. <laughs> Bloodless says DJ, it's natural to have a mental decline at our age. Yes, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on. How old do you think I am? Jace. Uh, also, Bloodless says that my USB ports just died. I hate this motherboard. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. Um, and that it's unfortunate. Grandpa DJ. They call me Daddy DJ for a reason. What? <laughs> DJ Dad Mouth. Yes, there we go. Sorry. So we've got oh. it all ready here. We're going to start slapping panels on and uh, yeah, moment Perfect. of truth coming up. I missed that from production, but I think we got all answered. Uh, and one last final thing before you get all the panels on, let's talk about uh, that front panel and the ports yeah, so and how that's going to work. Here, let's hold off on these doors. We'll show this as well. So 
Um, so I've obviously mounted our dust filter that you know you saw me throw in before. But what you can see here at the top here, you see these three gold dots. Um, so that's going to make contact with our front panel here that I've got in my hand. And you can see this has RGB strips running around. And this has three pins, three gold pins you can see. And those are going to make contact with those, with those gold dots. And that's what's going to power the RGB. So really like that. There's no cables to connect. I love that that's there. Um, all we got to do is put it in like this. And this just pops in, and that's that. And this is our door for our front panel connections here. This you just push up on. You can see that as well. Nice. All right. Now, those two panels that we talked about earlier, the the cable management panels, these are really, really cool doors that make it look so clean. Yeah, so you can see Hayden's done a great job of cable management here. We've got our main bundle here and then our power supply bundle going here. So just this itself looks great. Um, but this case does come with these doors that just slide on like the side panels on hinges. Another reason they're there is because mm -hmm. that back glass panel is clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right. if you don't have this door, I mean, it'll still look good, but the doors just make it look a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Now this cable will be we did have down. We did have a question earlier about if these colored cases come with a black base instead of a white base. Uh, and I believe the answer to that is no. So for these specific colors, no. These ones are on the white base. Now we do have other paint designs that are on the black that you can see on our website. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go ahead and do this if you guys want to see some of those. That is not the command. Special! Today! That's me! I'm extra special! <laughs> Jeez. Alrighty. So now we got those doors on. It looks great. Got those hinges and they just close right on up. LYPC. pain sometimes, but you're a pro, Hayden. Yep. And look at that. There it is. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's angle that puppy and turn it on. The moment of truth. Yeah, the <clears throat> moment of truth time. Man, I love this color on this case. The last is really nice. Glass. Honestly, it's, it's it's adorable. It's really nice. Oh, working with a mirror here. All right. You ready? Does this look good to you, Jason? <clears throat> Sweet. All right, so we're going to plug this in. Oh. And here we go. Oh, oh, I can so already see the motherboard light up. Before you press up. the button, Hayden, something I want to point out. So you can tell that the motherboard's getting power here. Obviously, that symbol is glowing. So the PC isn't on. It's just reading that it's getting power, and that's what's, that's what's running that. So, all right, go ahead. Boom. Wow, that's gorgeous. It's so bright. It is. So bright. And then you can change the lights with the remote? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will be a remote powered. Um, we, we're pretty, uh, try to be pretty careful with our remote here because it will change all of our other lights in the studio. <laughs> but you can set this to <laughs> any color you want. I just wanted the lights on purple to match the case. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can keep an eye on the CLX light behind us and you can tell if we're, uh, <laughs> if this remote is changing it or not. It has happened more times than we could possibly uh, count. Mm -hmm. take a stick at. You know what? We so like we RGB. Go. We're going to keep the Yeah, we're going to let it be there. So, yes, these uh, this RGB is controlled yeah. with our remote. You can control fan speed with that as what well. What we'll do is when it gets put in the background, we'll put it on purple. There we go. Yeah, that sounds good. That's a yep. good plan. Let's uh, well, th let's go ahead and go over what's going in this giveaway build for the month of April. This, of course, is in partnership with Asus, Kingston, and Fantex. We have ourselves a raw Evolve mid-tower white with a special lavender color on it. It's got an Intel Core i7-13700KF that's mounted on an Asus Prime Z or this an Asus Strix Z790A Wi-Fi motherboard. With 32 gigs total of DDR5 5600 Kingston RAM, it's also got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. The whole thing's being cooled by an Intermax Liquimax 3 ARGB uh, li AIO liquid cooler, plus a seven different GameDS Aeolus M2 fans. Uh, all of this, of course, is being powered by a 1,000 watt Fantex amp white power supply. And this is what you may win at the end of this month. So 
to go over all of your options. Make sure that you are following us on all of our socials at YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, and that you're paying attention to the Discord itself. That's discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. We do giveaway codes all over the place, and that's what's super fun about this. You can get codes on our socials, codes in our uh in our discord codes on my stream and codes right here on our weekly show this show happens every tuesday and thursday at 11 a.m pacific that's 2 eastern except this thursday because we'll be heading all down to san diego for dreamhack uh make sure you follow us on all of our socials and that you're here the following tuesday because we're gonna be giving away more codes and more fun so uh coming up next we're gonna take a quick little break and when we come back hayden is gonna take over and start speed building once again we're gonna give him his power tools back and uh let him let him go wild so on behalf of jason and kyle in production paul and hayden i'm dj blue pdx don't go away we've got more coming up after the break we'll be right back bye bye guys